welcome to NEKVT Rocks. And my guest today is Jean Hamlet. And we're going to be talking about Ms. Honky or Mrs. Honky. And for, for anyone who has no clue what I'm talking about right now, which is probably a lot of people, the duck, the goose on Lake Memphremagog, who has been there for at least three years, I believe, Correct became a quote issue last year when people started getting worried about this goose who clearly shouldn't be on Lake Memphrey Magog in the winter. We're used to Canada geese flying through, landing, making a mess, going on again. But here was a goose that was staying and nobody understood how or why. Well, Pick as up. far <laughs> as Mrs. Honky goes, I found out about her uh, this past December. I didn't, I actually was not aware. And so we started watching her carefully, and she Who's is a, we? Uh, my my friend Ashley LaRose, my cousin, uh -huh. and her husband Joe. And um, we just, you know, we're just starting to worry with her age as she's climbing the ladder with age, and she's a domestic goose, so she yeah. could fly just short distances. Right. And watching her in the fall, all of a sudden, all the wild geese and ducks that she'd been with all summer were disappearing, and there she stood. I know. By herself. So sad. It, you know, and she did, I mean, it's an adjustment for her to be within, you know, our care. But um, she just absolutely, you know, needed, once the ice came last year, she did all right with the water open mm -hmm. here and there. But as the temperatures dropped, we just said, okay, we've, yeah. she's in trouble. First of all, they really do need the water. Right. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing of all. And um, we had actually, well, there wasn't just myself. In the fall, when I found out about her, we had numerous people trying to help right. to, to get her without scaring her. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to back you up for a second. The way this became public is the, quote, good side of social media. Correct. There was a Facebook post on Newport, Vermont Rocks, asking about the goose. And two or three people then posted other posts asking the questions, what is this goose? Who is this goose? Right. <laughs> Anybody know about this goose? Well, apparently she was, you know, um, abandoned by her irresponsible owner, I would dare say. You know, I mean, she's a domestic goose. So right. obviously someone had her. And, you know, she made, she was fine on her own. Of course, the summer, she's having a fabulous time out there. Right. And or that, did she leave on her own? It could have happened. It, you know, she, ducks do. <laughs> well, d yes, you know, and um, but she was spotted here and there, and right. you know that was the thing. And finally, we, well, as winter set in hard, we ended up making a nest under the bridge, Gardner Park Bridge. Mm -hmm and a nice straw nest, and immediately she started using it. So we knew it was comforting to her. Mm -hmm. um, we were and feeding protective, and too. And protected. And we would be, you know, we'd feed her daily, and it was funny because through Facebook, like you said, the good side of Facebook, um, we would post something, and when I was not able to make right. it there, we had numerous people that I had never met offer, I'll do the feeding today, and you do yeah. the It was amazing. And um, it was actually comforting to see that so many people did care. Mm -hmm. And um, so we ended up, you know, finally, um, once the ice froze over, we were just heartbroken because she was in trouble. And mm -hmm. the ice was too thin for us to get onto the ice to right. get her. So that was her safety zone. And um, we, well, I should say, because my cousin does live in Newport, Ashley LaRose, she mm -hmm. ended up going twice and three times daily with a bucket of lukewarm water uh -huh. and putting it next to her food under the bridge. And she really, she loved it. She, she just really, you know, they need water desperately, yes. especially, you know, with their food. So, um, you know, she survived, but when it was 20 below, it was not, it was not good. No right. matter what we did for her, it was, I researched, you mm -hmm. know, domestic geese, and they do okay to about 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. But when it's, it dips below zero, it's another story. So, you know, after watching her, you know, we, we had sleepless nights when it was windy and freezing, and, you know, we didn't know what we'd find in the morning. It was not fun. Right. So that's when we decided, you know, as she ages, and a lot of people who had been tracking her and, and seeing her mm -hmm. were wondering if that was the right thing to do because she'd been on her own for so long. 
but you know it's that or you know freezing to death is not a good no. way to go so we just well, starving to death ex- which would also happen. exactly so we just said you know this is time and um, we had some crazy episodes trying to catch her we had a lady from New Hampshire who was supposedly very good with geese and she could she did not do well <laughs> we had volunteers from everywhere locally you know yes. that really did kind of sit down and hang out in the freezing cold yes and well fine actually when we decided we've got to do something the animal control who's Renee Falconer and a neighbor mm-hmm. and a good friend decided to help and we were on both sides of the river trying to guide her in so we could maybe crate her well someone called the newport city police on us saying that we were probably stepping onto thin ice although we were not on the ice we knew better and uh, we thought oh dear here we go and You're joking. they showed up lights going and the whole sh- and we, I thought, well, you know, whatever. Did we'll they feel what. really stupid when they saw what was happening? Well, you know, they, um, they were actually awesome. They Good. were like, oh, this is what's going on. Oh, can we help? It was amazing. Yay. So, so we, you know, they, they tried. It was so cold that day. And, yeah. you know, finally they said, oh, my gosh, we're leaving it up to you girls. So they left. <laughs> But, um, you know, I called the game wardens and they didn't have a, you know, a gun net. We thought maybe that would, and yeah. they did not have one available. Call veterinarians about maybe tranquilizing and they didn't, you know, they just don't have the need for things like that. And then we right. called the Rapture Center in Queechee and they said, you know, they were so awesome. They really spent time with, with me on the phone mm-hmm. and they said, what we rescue is usually injured, so right. it's, therefore it's very easy. So we're kind of on our own. <laughs> That's when you say, well, maybe if I step on her foot, she counts as injured. Can you help me then? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it was just, it was crazy. It, once we get the ball going, it's just there was no stopping. Yeah. So, and so then that was last year. That was last year. Okay. And as spring set in, we mm-hmm. thought, well, she was, I saw the first geese arrive yeah. and the first ducks and she loved, you know, she loved the company and yeah, we all saw her out with the Canada with, geese. Exactly. She was just, you know, she's very kind to them and they were to her and mm-hmm. um, so we just said, well, we'll let her enjoy her summer pretty much. I mean, we we kept food, but as summer mm-hmm. set in, she managed quite well. And then once September, I think it was, we said, you know, I haven't really seen her for a couple of weeks. Right. And that's when, thank goodness for Newport having a Facebook page, because that's exactly the approach we had to take. Right. To just say, we need eyes. We, please, if anyone sees this goose, yeah. report time and place. And, and they he, did. And they did. And it was amazing to me how she went from Prouty Beach to, you know, the... the City dock, South Bay, South, <laughs> and then finally South Bay. Yeah. And I was like, and at first I thought that was not a good thing because I was like, wow, it's hard to get into the water. The, the, the land is just, yeah, you know, know. very <laughs> difficult. There's no access except for the fishing access. So bless her heart, my dear cousin set out in a kayak, and uh, we had been told she was somewhere there, mm-hmm. and she was able to spot her. So we she came back, and um, about a week later, we all set out, you know, um, Hannah Cutler, mm-hmm. um, Ashley, her husband, uh, myself. We had a couple others supposed to join us who last minute couldn't make it. But we, we had people, don't, you know, helping us with nets and kayaks. That was a borrowed kayak. And it was right. amazing how the whole community <laughs> kind yeah. of the discussion in. on Facebook about the nets was really funny because not everybody understood Unde- why you wanted nets. Right, <laughs> right. And uh, finally, you know, when we set out, it, the day was the most perfect day. Mm-hmm. It was 42 degrees. It yeah. was clear, no wind, calm. And uh, this was two weeks ago, right? Yes, and we had found one location that had an access Mm -hmm. further down because we said if we have a crate ready but to kayak all the way back to the the fishing access would be a long with a very upset goose goose right between your feet (laughs) is challenging Uh (laughs) uh-huh so I you know that's where everyone was so awesome helping us I found out this one property 
mm -hmm. that maybe we could access from uh, was on Billings Point. Right. And that was Mr. and Mrs. Ganya, Claudia yes. Ganya. And I introduced myself. I just showed up, knocked on their door, and I said, this is the situation. They said, oh, well, we've seen that goose. We didn't know the story. And they were so great. They showed us exactly how to get down close to the water with yeah. our truck and the crate. It was, they were, everyone was so helpful. So from there, we had a, myself and Hannah, we took off mm -hmm. from that location. My cousin, her husband from the fishing access, and yeah. we came from Converged. different directions. And we spotted her and um, gotta say, it was almost like she was ready. Probably. Um, <laughs> She was hungry, that she was, and she swam to a cove, a small cove, mm -hmm. and we just kind of blocked the exit with our kayaks, and um, we just kind of took our time. We fed her corn, and she was more interested in corn than even looking at us. Right. So with that, it, we were five feet from her, and uh, you know, Joe LaRose got out with the net, and um, you know, he, he just, he got her, he netted her, and we had some laughs. We, uh, he lost both his shoes in the mud <laughs> completely, and he sunk to his knees, and he really had a hard time getting out. I bet. <laughs> and um, meanwhile, we've got the goose netted, and we're trying mm -hmm. to get her into the kayak, and um, I ended up thinking, I don't want to lose my new muck boots, so I took them off. <laughs> But I, the socks didn't look good. <laughs> and I was terrified. I was like, wow, snapping turtles live in this? You know, I, I just, you know, just barefoot and whatnot. But uh, we had a lot of laughs, and it was intense for a minute. Yeah. But um, she was a great goose. She just went to the front of the kayak and just became very quiet. And just sat down. And sat down. And, um, you know, we created her, and it was amazing, amazing. Yeah. One of you took a video, and that will be attached to this show. Yeah, that was Hannah so Cutler. everybody can see that. Bless it her was heart. lovely, and <laughs> we're just watching you have somebody's feet in the kayak just coming in, and you're all just gliding in. It was great, and you know, we kind of had to laugh once we had the goose. We're all back in our kayaks, mm -hmm. and we're all bottoming out because the lake is so low. Yeah, the water level. Right. So we're we're paddling in mud. Yeah, I know <laughs> and finally we had to get out and push, push. our kayak. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, talk about a bunch of goofs, you know? I mean, seriously, if we'd been videoed, could you imagine? Oh, that would have been wonderful <laughs> if you'd been fully videoed. We're all mud. We're missing shoes, and yeah. one's got a twisted knee, one's got a twisted back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but all for the sake of the goose, and she's just doing absolutely great. So she then came out of the kayak into the back of the truck. In the crate. In the crate. <laughs> and then I brought her home, and um, having two Pekin ducks that I had rescued. And you live in Barton. I right? live in Barton, and they're all females. So I mm -hmm. just knew it would not be an issue for them. I mean, I've watched Mrs. Honky. You know, she was just not aggressive with any right. waterfowl. And my Pekin ducks, uh, you know, they're meat birds, mm -hmm. you know, not not ever for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they, they just, they mind they're their own business. They're, they are, they're pets, they're yeah. families. So they just immediately, they were fine together, yeah. which was a relief. You know, I yes. want her to have company. And it's going to be a big adjustment for her. It's not easy to be basically a feral goose coming mm -hmm. to live you know but we've built her a beautiful condo it is weasel proof for nights mm -hmm. she has um, a water heater I mean she's gonna be all set and I mean we have an enclosed outdoor area mm -hmm. so she has her pool <laughs> you know and she hangs out with her friends but you know our plan for spring is to you know build a much larger enclosure mm -hmm. um, and maybe possibly get a little pond in there is what we're looking sure. for. So um, the donations have already started to come in, some good donations. So how do people even find out? It's crazy. I don't even know how they find out. They're like, oh, you know, just it's word of mouth. It's you great. Know? And I mean, these donations were offered. I didn't even bring it up. I was just saying, this is our plan. We'll see how it goes. And all of a sudden it's like, well, here's a hundred. For It's amazing to me. You know, people care, yes. and and it's comforting to my heart because nowadays there's so much negative in the world, and I, you know, this really helps. Part of 
my uh, nagging you to do the, <laughs> do this show <laughs> was because we really need some feel good stories Absolutely. right now. It's a pretty miserable time for everybody. It is. It is. And here is something that really worked out and it was about community coming together it to was it. it was it's it was unbelievable and i'm i had last seen her on the clyde yeah and i walked the clyde when i it had been a few weeks sure. since i'd seen her and i was just i was just walking and i ran into some people fishing and mm -hmm. i said have you seen a goose and they'd say no but we come a lot so could we have your name and contact number so if right. we do see it was crazy amazing how many people were out there with their you know with their eyes just set on this right. goose. So you do realize that now you're going to become the bird woman. I was the bird woman before the goose. <laughs> and anytime somebody has a bird that needs rescuing, you, your name's going to be out Yeah, there. it seems to be anyways, but I cannot take everything, you know. So oh. that's the hard part, you know. That's know. the hard part. You have to put, you know, but she's going to be family. She, and I, I laugh because people who had helped me in one way or another say can i have visiting rights can i come visit? <laughs> and you know i said absolutely you know absolutely for sure you know so i can see the local school being really interested yeah, absolutely yeah i mean why not you know yeah. i mean there's a story going around on tv um i think it's a bbc production which is about uh, it's either a crane or a stork but a bird that was injured and not able to fly, but who had a nest and fledglings and got rescued by somebody who was there who takes care of that bird. Mm -hmm. And her mate flies away, because they migrate too, right. and comes back each year. And then there's more progeny in the nest, more eggs. And they fly again. If I can find where it is, it was, it's in one of the Czechoslovakian countries, one, I'd love to see yeah, that. Yeah, I'll find that, that for you and send yeah. it. Maybe we can attach it to this as well. That would be great. Because, be great. you know, people think, oh, birds. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and I, it got to a point where she knew us and she yeah. she knew the voices. I, sure. I know Betsy Hampton had gotten quite friendly with this goose before she started going to Florida, I think, yeah. in the winter. And, um, you know, I mean, there was times when she'd be across the river and we would come to feed her and we'd call her and she'd come and swim across, you know, the river to come and eat. So yeah. she, especially Ashley's voice, she... A good lunch is here. <laughs> yes, absolutely, you know. So, you know, they, they, they do, they understand. And right. um, I've rescued many and it's amazing to me how all of a sudden it seems like they're just ready. They're ready to, to be cared for, you know. Right. It's... Uh, I just, we sleep a lot better already, you know, just knowing that she's going to be I'm fine. I'm sure she does, too. Yeah, she, and actually I was super worried that it was a shock to her system, I'm positive. And I said, well, it, she probably won't be eating for a day or two, you know, just in a new <laughs> environment. She was eating in a crate. She yeah. was like, she. <laughs> feed me, just yeah, feed me. Yeah, she was not a problem. <laughs> yeah, sort of so, wonder what's her history. Where did she come from? You know, I mean, I've had a few people mention, you know, maybe Strawberry Acres, that area, yeah. or Ferentz Point, but, um, I, you know, I don't know. I wasn't even aware of her till last year, so, right. you know, I don't really know. You know, I'm sure somebody had geese, and she got away, and they just didn't bother to... Well, nothing they can do. You know, well, I'm there is, because I did it. <laughs> yeah, but you have to know where the bird has gone. Right, right. Right. And I've certainly known people with ducks, and one duck has flown further and not come back. Right, right. And what do you do? You know, you and no I was just clue. worried for her safety, too, because the water is her safety. Yes. You know, I mean, there's a lot of predators out there, and, and that's why my enclosure is covered. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a net over it. Right. And, you know, I mean, we, you never know. You never know. I know. You know, <laughs> I, you know, it's just, so I don't want her to feel unsafe, you know. I, I right. just uh, want her to be okay. So. And you have other birds as well. I do. I do. <laughs> How many other? What other birds do you I have? I have a macaw. Yeah. I have what color? It's a blue and gold macaw. Oh, gorgeous. Gizmo. I have an Amazon. And uh -huh. her name is Urkel. Her. We thought he was a he, but he's yeah. not. Um, and that's an Amazon. And I've got a cockatoo, Albert. And I've got... Um, 
she's wonderful, Paco, a little African gray. Uh -huh. And they've all been with me about 25 years. Yeah. So they're family. And then two years ago, I added this little lovebird. And how she came was also, she somehow, somewhere, she got out. Mm -hmm. And she was definitely hand raised with that. Yeah. And she landed on a woman gardening in Swanton. And she batted her away, Aww. but she didn't know. She right. thought it was a wild bird, and then it came back, and she thought. So she brought it to her garage, and she, I don't know why she called the Frontier mm -hmm. Animal Shelter here. And they have your name. Of course. <laughs> and they said, well, there's this little bird. So a friend of mine was in that area. She picks up the bird, brings it back, and I, I you know, I have large birds, so right. I didn't really wasn't really set up for a lovebird. So I put on Facebook, I, you know, if anyone has lost a lovebird, she has been rescued if you, you know, no one claimed her. So, of course, she lives upstairs where she's away from the other mm -hmm. um, larger birds. And Although I've seen it work with smaller Yes, I have. Birds. I have seen it work, too. But uh, yeah. she is like, I've had lovebirds, and yeah. she is like none other that I've ever met. She is a human in a bird suit. She is on us constantly. Mm -hmm. She, it, I have never met a little bird who needs a human as much as her. Huh. And I said, maybe they threw her out the window because she's so demanding. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. who knows? But she's High um, maintenance love bird. You know, her name is Sunshine and she's our sunshine. I mean, she is just, yeah. she eats with us. She's, she's on us. She's, yeah. you know, the dogs, you know constantly watch her and do you so. have an aviary in the house for the others I do and yeah. I have one out I have an sure. outdoor aviary for my parrots in the in the yeah. summer they look you know they need the sun and the Absolutely. breeze and the, the air and you know our season's short so yeah, very <laughs> they spend a lot of time outside you know in the summer they're out mm -hmm. there they love it so yeah. yep do you have other animals too <laughs> two German Shepherds mm -hmm. both rescues um, and they're my, sh you know, the male is Shadow. His name is Shadow because he's totally my shadow. He, he's my protector. He's so loyal. He's yeah. an amazing dog. And uh, Gracie was, had about a day before getting euthanized. And I went to see her and she had shut down. She was curled up in a ball. Um, she'd completely quivering, had not eaten in days. And so she was on the euthanasia list and um, I grabbed her and she pulled out of her shell within 10 days. She's a fabulous dog. So those are my two dogs and um, have, you know, two horses. I have two horses also. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. No Come more. Out. Enough, enough mouths. Yeah, feed, it's an expensive you know. hobby. <laughs> it is. It is. They're my last two, you know, but uh, they're young, so they're going to be around a long time. So, you know, they're 15 and horses make it to 30 I know. pretty easily. Do you ride them? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah, I do. I ride one and I pony the other, so yeah. they always go and yeah. or vice versa and yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice to have. You know? I agree. They're like <laughs> totally. dogs too. They're the I kind know. of horses that you could let go loose and they'd be on <laughs> they won't leave you. <laughs> yeah. So you know, they're all very we we're tight, our little family, you know, all the animals are just Have you thought of writing a book? Oh yeah, I have actually. <laughs> Thought Maybe about when it I or retired. started it. You know, just I have some amazing stories for sure. Well, maybe it's something that you could partner with somebody. You know, I um, I actually had a riding stable, a horse farm before. I think it was from '83 to 2005. That's mm -hmm. what I did. And I taught. You know, we showed horses yeah. and taught riding. And was that up here as well? That was in Derby. That was Foxwood Stables. Oh yeah. And um, that was, you know great family i mean that uh -huh. barn was we had about 30 horses and everyone we were just like this huge family and uh, i wish i had taken notes because the things that happened i should have had a scrapbook right funny things that you know over the years oh my goodness it would have been a great book it'd been a bestseller <laughs> foxwood stable still exists right um it has just been sold um, right yeah and now it's um it's tr i think i believe they're gonna have actually cattle their beef well, yeah yeah too bad yeah well you know, know. times change you know things change yes they do they do they do so do you go into schools 
I I used to with the horses. We used to do like jumping demonstrations even mm-hmm. at the Derby Junior High. We yeah. did that, you know, for many years. But at this point, you know, with of course the COVID, there's nothing. Oh, you know. Yeah, wow. Well, That's kind of. <laughs> I meant after that. Yeah, <laughs> it will know, end someday. Smaller groups I would do, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, I've done that with you know kids in a library with my macaw and. You know, that was so much fun. I mean, it was, it was very educational, and my macaw was right into it. She, <laughs> she was right. just, you know, taking it all in, loved it. Just I mean, loved I was it. thinking that care of poultry, fowl, would be something that kids would be really interested in. I think it's... very little interest in seeing them as birds. Right, yeah. right. And there's and yet so they many are. people who are number one terrified of anything with feathers. It amazes Isn't it me. Weird? Yeah, it's it's definitely a phobia. I you know, and I see the beauty in them. That's all I can see. Yeah. You know, and, uh, maybe they were raised on that Hitchcock movie. Maybe, <laughs> <I'm bad>. possibly, <laughs> possibly. But um, no, it was just um, you know, I first of all, all these feathered friends. They're also very different. Even the parrots, you know, yeah. the macaw compared to the African gray. It's amazing that just how they have their own characters, you know, and it's it's just very interesting to watch them. Yeah, to watch them, you know, just and interact. how they interact with each other and with you. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There, I have one. The cockatoo is a male. Yeah. And he's. He does not like any other men around. <laughs> does not like, does not welcome men. Any, in, does not like men. But, that uh, must make him a little challenging sometimes. He is. He's with. the hardest one of all, you know. Yeah. And then the others are all, you know, they're all females. And Paco, the little African girl, she's, I, I, how do they know? She sees a woman and a man and she'll fly to the man and land and love, you know, <laughs> nibble on the ears. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting how they're put together, these little creatures, you know, just amazing. Yeah. And how they're still hormone driven, even with humans. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had rescued two macaws, uh, Mm -hmm. maybe two years ago. And I had, there was no choice. I, they were left in a home. The person had passed away and, and someone was feeding them daily, but there was no inter, there was no stimulation. It was awful. You know, no radio, no nothing. That's horrible. They had to leave, and yeah. so I took them in, and I had them for like six months because I don't. These animals are for life. Yes, parents are for life. life. A long life. So you don't just pass them on because you're doing them zero favor by doing that. Yeah. So it took me about six months, and I found a fabulous sanctuary, um, unbelievably right here in um, Milton, in Milton, really? Vermont. Huh. And um, funny thing, it's odd how things happen, but. They just saw that I had posted a photo of these two beautiful birds. And again like, on social media? Again. It has its uses. And they were like, well, who do you use for a vet? We lost our vet, retired. And and so I, we finally made contact. And they they had about 30 birds that they care for that were all unwanted. You know, mm. that's a really big problem. Yes. Our, you know, there's a lot of unwanted dogs and cats, but you can place those fairly easy. Mm-hmm. Birds, it's a lifetime commitment. Right. And um, they they had gotten into taking care of the, and I finally, we got talking, and little, can you imagine, we, she was a horse lady also. We actually boarded at the same barn in Colchester, the <laughs> same, we probably bypassed each other. Yeah. It's, it was amazing. It was like, wow, <laughs> you know, how odd is that? So um, we've become very good friends, and they did take the two macaws, and they send me videos. They post, you yeah. know, things on, on Facebook. They, you know, I'm, I stop in and visit. It's just, you know, mm-hmm. it's amazing that I found them so near. Right. It's even hard finding a vet. For both. Yeah. It's um, when we lived in Philadelphia, the, there was a vet who specialized right. in birds. But up here, it's really it's a challenge. Tough. Actually, I had... Um, these two macaws that I adopted yeah. for a while, um, my one macaw started, the hormones just started to just, they were, it was not good. It was, they were just, you know, raging hormones with the macaws. And I was yeah. like, she started plucking and I was like, uh-oh, that's why I really needed to find a yeah. place for these. 
and she's 100% perfect, but I just wanted to double check, make sure she was all right. I ended up traveling to Saratoga to an a, you know, a right. veterinarian who's used to birds. So, I mean, you know, who specializes in birds. Yeah. And that's a five hour drive. That's <laughs> one big, way. That's a big commitment. Yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, but we manage and, you know, yeah. we've got connections and just keep our fingers crossed that everything's well. Yeah. So if people are interested in learning more about birds, mm -hmm. can they contact you? They can. I will pretty much most of the time discourage anyone from adopting parrots. Yeah. Because even, you know, and if you have the best heart of heart and you, things happen in life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my dad lived with me the last two years of his life right. and the birds became very they feel the energies change and yeah. they were not nice and I you know it was it was very heartbreaking but I mean we worked through it you know but things happen and right. you just can't I mean they're they're living creatures right and we're know? all getting older and exactly so but I ended up once all of that had gone by um, I had a Reiki master come and mm -hmm. work with with the parrots it really helped yeah. And I mean, they're just 100% back to normal. There's nothing yeah. I can, you know, change counter. the energy. Oh, absolutely. The energy is a big thing, and stimulation is a big thing. So yes. I tend to discourage, especially the larger breeds, you yes. know, that are here for 75 years and 100 years. You know, it's it's, and I've met people who are de they will be dedicated to to the end. I, you know, but then I've met many. One thing happens and they're you know like well I need to rehome this bird well it's not that easy right it's not that easy you know there's more parrots that need homes than dogs and cats this sanctuary is overflowing you know so it's something to think about you know and they say I'd like to buy my child a little parrot mm, maybe right. a love bird who lives 10 yeah. years but you know the big parrots I just don't I don't encourage it because I know no, what it takes. that makes sense. Because I know what it takes, you know. Yeah. And and it's it's not cheap, you know. I mean, they get sprouts, they get fresh vegetables and fruit. They, you know, I cook for them. They get yams. Mm -hmm. I, I blueberry pancakes. You name it, you know. So birds are, you know. But right. I just I, there's not one I don't love, you know. They're all special in their own way. I really do. So now we've got Mrs. Hunky. And we are all delighted <laughs> that she has a home for the winter, that so people exciting. don't have to be worried, and that there's really a happy ending here. It is, and someone did ask me, are you going to release her in the spring? And trust me, no. I wish I could, <laughs> No. but it took us eight months to get yeah, her, no. you know, so probably not. Right. Know. And by then she'll be part of that group yeah. anyway. It's, I mean, it's going to take time for her yeah. to adjust to all this, and, and it's not easy, I'm sure. No. But she's eating well. She's interacting great with the ducks. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it'll come. It'll come, you know. Just right. Big adjustment. At least she's alive. <laughs> exactly. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad we have a really wonderful story for Newport, about Newport. Yes, yes. Thank you, Newport. Everyone from Newport, I so appreciate it. You know. I wish I'd seen the police with their sirens for these two <laughs> coming to arrest these crazy people. <laughs> yes, it was, I, I was, I was so amazed. I was really pleased when they said, oh, that's what you, what well, can we help? It was amazing. It was, I had to laugh. I said, yeah. wow, even they were into it, you know, right. so. Well, anyway, thank you for coming in. Thank you. And good luck. Me. Thank you. <laughs>